Ladies and gentlemen, we are not live. I don't know why I say we're, that every time. We're, no, live. we're live. We're we live. We're currently live. To each other. When you see this, though, we it's, won't be live it's anymore. It's not live. It's but not right live. now, we're live. Right now, currently, currently to each other, we are live. Welcome That's to right. Relax Retro Talk, episode, I think, 28. Um, be sure, if you enjoy these, be sure to give them the old thummy in the bummy. And uh, let, us, let us know in the comments what you think of these. Uh, this is probably going to be the weakest point in our growing up with uh, series yeah. because yeah. neither of us has really grew up with either console, honestly. No, um, no. These these two consoles came out at a time where you had to pick a lane when you were yeah. gaming. You picked a lane, and uh, for me, I didn't pick either of these lanes. Yeah. My older brother picked, uh, went jumped on board with the GameCube. Oh, but, did he? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for me, I was heavy duty into the Xbox and the PS2, and yeah. uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of time for uh, any of these other things. So I had caution, Dookie. I don't, I don't, I never really grew up with either one of these systems. Yeah, I, I was adjacent to them at best. Um, but you've at least owned. Do you own a GameCube too? Ah, uh, yeah, I do actually. I was gonna okay. say I so don't. I mean, but at least the Wii you plays GameCube, you own... but. You own them. Well, I mean, I guess if we count that, I have a Wii. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any GameCube games for it, though. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, kind of like I didn't grow up really with uh, the uh, either of them either, really. But I did have – I would say I had uh, – the Dreamcast came out first. It was mm -hmm. kind of the first console of that generation. Yeah. Um, yeah, they rushed it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it would have been 99, I believe, because it was like September yeah, 99, 9, 99. 99. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I never played, forget that. I played it. There was a one of the kind of like rich families in our hometown had a Dreamcast. And okay. so I would go over to their place after school and I would play. They had uh, Sonic Adventure. They That's had Jet Set Radio or Jet Grind yep. Radio. I, I think they're Jet the same. Jet Grind Radio. Yeah. And then I think that's all they had. That's all I remember playing over there. They might have had other games, but we played a lot of that. Uh, played a lot of Sonic Adventure because we. I went from like uh, only playing like Sonic on the on the Genesis, and then um, basically like there was no Sonic games until Sonic Adventure, other than like right. shitty spinoffs like Sonic Spinball and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. And Sonic 3D Blast, which is still <laughs> – they're both on the Genesis. So, I mean, past right. the Genesis, there was nothing really going on. Yeah. And Sonic Adventure was a fun game. Yeah, well, especially right? at the like, time. At the time, it yeah. was like – There was nothing like it. Yeah, it was mind-blowing at the time because you you could only really imagine what a 3D Sonic would have played like at the time. And then when you actually went and played it, it was it was pretty freaking cool. Like, it's got mm -hmm. that hub world – uh, with all the all the people in it and stuff, and Sonic's like interacting with like this city, and the the big bad like Chaos is an excellent boss. If you check out, I did like that top ten Sonic games video. I kind of right, mentioned yep, yep. how how perfect Chaos is like, just such a good final boss, like final villain because he's basically right. like a force of nature. Like he's he's a fluid beast basically that destroys the city and everything. So. Nice. It's a nice step yeah. up from Doctor Robotnik, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was a big shift, right? Mm -hmm. They they took a lot of risks. I think it paid off for them. I think um, so. The the only real game I knew about the Dreamcast at the time, I used to work at the local uh, convenience store in our small hometown, and there was this guy that worked road crew um, who would always come in and get a uh, cherry Pepsi Slurpee or a Doctor Pepper Slurpee. Like that was his jam. He right. every day come in and that's what he would get anyway the dude, dude the dr talking, pepper ones were so good they're dynamite they're, yeah, they're yeah. dynamite he had great slurpee choice let yeah. me tell you 
But he would come in and he was talking about how he got this Dreamcast. How the Dreamcast was the best console out of the three. My older brother worked there at the time. My older brother was a PlayStation head, right? And he was yeah. like, no, we're going to get the PS2. PS2 is going to be so much better. He's like, no, you're ridiculous. The Dreamcast is going to stomp this year. And he was talking about this game called Seaman. Oh, Which yeah. Was this creepy freaking game? Yeah, where it's weird. It, the game, yeah, the game came with a microphone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you talk to you to this thing. So you like get a, an aquarium and then you get this little alien thing that goes into the aquarium and then you talk to it, you feed it, you interact with it. And yeah, it's, it's one of those like living pet games. And he like evolves and stuff. He evolves. Yeah. 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 It, and it's, it's insane. It, I, if you ever get a chance to look out on, on YouTube, that was actually one like fragment of the game. The game actually has multiple sequels in Japan. Oh, like there's yeah. like a whole world of like the seaman type game. It, I don't think it did very well C-man. over here. Seaman, Seaman, <laughs> and uh, I don't think it did very well over here in North America. But it was an incredibly unique game, and I always remember him talking about that game. And that was like, man, I should really check this Dreamcast thing out. I didn't really know any of the other games that were there um, until like way later, like yeah. way past its life cycle, um, was when I finally started learning a little bit about the Dreamcast. Um, but at the time, there was really nothing that like interests me. It was mostly fighting games and racing yeah. games, mm-hmm. and it was just stuff that I just wasn't interested in. Sports games, a whole lot of sports games. Um, the only other title and that I was even aware of, because we used to watch like they used to have like uh, game review uh, shows, yeah, on like TV. X-Play That's, and stuff like that. But show. before it wasn't X-Play, it was something I can't remember the name of it. Game Nation stuck in my head, but that was was it. Reviews on the story. Run, remember that one? Reviews, dude? reviews on Tell Me Tell or Rico. Um, the uh, the only other game that I know was Shenmue. For the Dreamcast, oh yeah, I can't believe I forgot about Shenmue. Supposed to be an absolute phenomenal game, a story-based action. Uh, what do you call that when you have to hit the button in the right order? Um, yeah, yeah. Time, time event. Game. Yeah, there's like quick time um, events. Quick and... time events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was supposed to be just like phenomenal. Um, and that one also almost got me in with the Dreamcast. Yeah. But I mean, I was I was too young to afford multiple consoles, like we were saying at the beginning of the Especially uh, like a, the at the time next gen console. You yeah, know what I, mean, I mean like it's I one thing the, to... Dreamcast Dreamcast was what, three hundred three ninety nine, two ninety nine? Something like that. I mean that's a lot of money. Yeah, right? yeah. Especially for a high school kid or something like that, right? Like that's yeah. that's a ridiculous amount of money. Hundred percent. The thing, Shenmue, I think, got a lot of people to buy a Dreamcast. A lot of people because there was no game like that back then. Like you could argue maybe Grand Theft Auto, but not really. Like even Grand Theft Auto didn't become what we now know as it as until the PS2. Nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Honestly, even past that, right? Yeah. I think I think the PS2 had Grand Theft Auto. No, 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 no. You're right. Grand Theft Auto Three, Vice City. Uh, that was all PS2, but it really didn't, even in those days, it was still kind of run around the city. Yeah, it, it didn't have, like, less, such a strong, like, narrative and interaction. It wasn't interaction. until the next gen that you had GTA 4. I think, I think there was, uh, what was the one, what was the, the, uh, the other Grand Theft Auto? I'm missing the one in between here. The one that had the hot coffee Oh, mod. San Andreas. San Andreas. I think San Andreas was, like, the, the turning point for grand theft auto when yeah shifted yeah away from what they were into what they were about to be because that actually had that kind of story and stuff more yeah and it was more like you could interact more with the community like shenmue and stuff yeah. like that and yeah. it was kind of all about just living in that in that world right um 100%. i was actually there's a guy i've been watching his streams uh pretty much every lo- like i usually work out on my lunch hour and stuff and i've been watching his streams for like a, oh probably over a month or so now um, I think it's just Yosh Games Live or something like that. Okay. But he he played through all of Shenmue 3, which is, like, the newest one. Nice. Um, and, man, it's just, like, it is. It's just, like, kind of, like, a chill environment. It's got its own, like, yeah. kind of world and story that you live in. And it's pretty cool. I would say the equivalent now, like, uh, even, like, on the PS2, the equivalent after the Dreamcast died would be like the Yakuza series, right? Or I like think a so dragon. Too, yeah. yeah. Like the spiritual successor. I would yeah, game, right? I think it is. Yeah. It's essentially yeah. the spiritual successor. 
but but still at that time there was nothing close to that mm-hmm. at all. No, it was it was a very very unique game. Yeah. Um and it Crazy really Cat. like it it's kind of sad that the Dreamcast failed because yeah. that kind of game is what went on to become like super super popular even in the PS2 and then PS3 and into into today really. Exactly. Well, and the other thing, too, that's funny, uh, well, maybe not funny, but the thing is, there's a lot of talk about uh, the next generation of Xbox, like where they're going next. Right, right. And there's a lot of talk and comparison about Xbox and the Dreamcast to the sense that the Dreamcast was Sony's last hardware. Sega. And then, or sorry, thank you. <laughs> Sega. Was Sega's last entrance into uh, the hardware market, mm-hmm. and then they shifted, and they were like, you know what? We'll just license our games out, and then we'll release it on other people's systems. We'll still make it. And Microsoft has said that they have yet to pull a profit on their hardware. It yeah. always they lose money in their hardware, and they get their money back on their software. Mm-hmm. With the advent of Games Pass, there's a lot of discussion that they're going to be shutting down the Xbox hardware. Yeah, Sorry. there is a lot of and going the way of Sega, right? Yeah, like this, like there's the, definitely the path that's already made. Whispers of that, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So they just had their, I think it was last week. Now they had a, I don't know if it was a, what do you want to call it, a press release or whatever. But yeah, it's it's basically their E3, but not E3 anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. Their thing. And they they basically said that. Um, They haven't said that particularly, but they have said that they're going to be bringing some of their games to, like, PlayStation and Nintendo and stuff like that. Um, And I don't even know if they said PlayStation, but I I know they said, like, Switch, I'm pretty sure. But, um, so, and it's not going to be, like, like brand new games. It's going to be, like, remember when the GameCube came out and you got, like, Resident Evil 4 and everybody bought bought a GameCube to play Resident Evil 4 and then a year later it came out on PS2? I think it's going to be, like, the timed exclusive thing is what they're going to go for because they might as well, and and PlayStation's been doing it on uh, PC for, like, a a, a while now too, right? Where everything's kind of timed exclusive. And I I think that's a good thing. I think... uh, you might as well make that money, right? If you're if you've got the game released out there, you've got your exclusivity uh, like payout. You've got whoever whoever is gonna wants to buy, play the game first is gonna buy that console. It still gives incentive right. to own that console, but yeah. at the same time, after the first like the first what like probably month or two months of a game's release are where the most sales are. So you can kind of double dip that that yeah like f- new release uh pr- purchase right so I, th- I think that'll help uh definitely in the long run what i hope doesn't happen is i hope that they don't stop making consoles because once you only have playstation doing the like n- the like keeping up with trying to keep up with the pc uh level of graphics as the only console then they can be as shitty as they want right you if you don't 100%. have competition everything kind of sinks uh, and Nintendo, yeah. I would, I really hope that Nintendo kind of keeps what they've got going with the Switch, but also improves the graphical and uh, frame rate capability and stuff like that. I don't even need like PS5, PS6 quality uh, graphics from the from the Switch Two. I just need like PS4 quality. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that it. I for me, it's all. It's always been less about the graphics. And more about the, uh, the, the quality of the game, yeah. right? Like if, if we talk about, I know, I know we're zipping off into, yeah, no into current gen, but if we talk about what what the garbage heap that was released as Pokemon Scarlet Violet, right? Yeah. Um, the game itself, and you know, folks have hacked their switches and played the game, and it runs significantly better um by by releasing kind of like these memory locks that they had on there and like running it oh, on better okay. hardware and yeah i've seen people because, playing it on like their steam deck and it runs yeah. better on the steam deck right. than it does on the damn switch and it's it's just because like if you think about it, the switch is essentially an android phone right like that's the 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 amount of processing power that's inside of a Nintendo oh, okay. switch right um i i I don't think Nintendo's going anywhere. If anything, um, they've got a good thing going with kind of this like uh, uh, combo thing where mm-hmm. it's both a mobile system and uh, a console yeah. at the same time. I, I really don't see them moving away from that. No, I, I don't do, either. I do see them improving uh, the quality, the hardware. I don't know how many more generations we're going to have here, though. If, if companies start dropping off um, and going to uh, service... 
then what we might end up having is companies offering basically like a dead, like a client PC kind of thing mm -hmm. where you just sign into it. You sign into your Sony account on this thing and you get access to PlayStation. You sign into your Microsoft account on this thing and you get access to Xbox. You sign into your Nintendo, you get access to your Nintendo games, yeah, right? Like, which I hope I never happens, honestly. I, I hope not, but I think that's where it's going because the companies don't want to have physical stuff anymore. No, they don't want you money. to be able to... A, there's so many reasons why they don't want you to 100%. be there. Like, um, they, Pull, pulling the licenses back is, is the current problem. Yeah, yes. So, like, they don't, they don't want you to be able to buy games used right because then right. they're yeah. not making money that's always been a problem yep. used in rentals yeah but i mean i fucking you have the right to fucking something you buy to sell like if yep. you buy a car you're not gonna be like oh i gotta get a new car and you have to buy it from a dealership and then you can't use your car like you know what i mean like it's it's yep. the market's getting so anti-consumer and i, I do feel like we are possibly destined for another video game crash because even these like triple a games aren't sustainable anymore kind of thing right so yeah it's uh yeah it's, it's kind of going that route and it honestly might be better for it uh i think the indie developers will be fine uh and that's kind of uh what we might end up with for a little while until the big the big uh, developers kind of pull their heads out of their asses and figure things out Hundred percent. Like you, you see what you, uh, Ubisoft said about their games, right? Like yeah. basically along the concept of like um, you don't actually own the game when you buy it. Yeah. And uh, you guys need to grow comfortable in the aspect that Not uh, chance, dude. That you that that um, you don't you don't actually own these games, and we can pull them back anytime we want, right? And like, they've done that. that, it, that they've historically done that. Look at. Uh... Scott Pilgrim, the I had that on PS3, and they just pulled it, got rid of it, just decided you couldn't it's, play it's it, done. and then yeah. released it like ten years later on the Switch and stuff, and so you could buy it again. Like, I hate Ubisoft, uh, and I, I I can't basically what it boils down to, and people have been saying this online ever since that press release came out is if purchasing isn't owning, then piracy is like is completely fine. Like, there's no there's nothing wrong with piracy because Paying for something if you don't own it, then what's the fucking point? Yeah. It's that, it's got it's got to go point. both. Yeah, it's got to go both ways. Either I own it, uh, or I don't own it. And exactly. if I don't own it, then Why nobody pay? owns it. Yeah. Right? Like, um, and so yeah. So I think I I I butchered their quote, but they said something no, along no, no, the no. lines of like like uh, people need to get comfortable with not owning games. Right? Yeah. Like you're gonna rent them from us. Yeah. You're gonna pay us money to use this as a service, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna pull that service away. And you're just gonna have to suck it up, Buttercup, because and re and rebuy it when we release our new yeah. service ten years down or, the road, or not not even right. Like yeah. I mean, you think about how far down the road it could possibly go. They could be set up in a way that you rent the game from the company at a dollar per day situation. Right. Here's or the a game monthly, you want monthly to... subscription. Or yeah, whatever, monthly yeah. subscription. But right now it's a catalog. It could yeah. easily turn into it's two ninety nine for the game until you decide to check it back into us yeah this yeah it's, 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 it's not going it's not going a good route for consumers that's for damn sure but, but rolling back to the old <laughs> dreamcast so the dream so the dreamcast i think um some of the other things i really so i i've never i never owned a dreamcast let's yeah. start there i thought the controller was a really cool idea because the, it was the vmu's Yes. So the con the controller itself, um, and then the ability to socket in your memory card, which acted mm -hmm. as its own little gaming platform as yeah, well. Yeah, it had buttons on it there, and the screen. Stuff, yeah. Right? I always thought that was just such a cool idea. The absolute dumbest decision they ever made was sticking the cord on the bottom of the controller. Yeah, which is weird because then they reroute it through the top and there's a little clip there anyway, mm -hmm. so I don't understand. It's just to be different, weird. I guess. I don't know, but I... That's that's one of the dumbest things I think that they ever did. Was, yeah, it's super uh, weird. Mounted the uh, the we had the classic controller and it did the same thing for some reason, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Wii, all of the Wii controllers mounted on the bottom. I get it for the for the nunchuck, nunchuck right? Because yeah. you got it in one hand, you you have a cable in between. That's fine, but to have a controller, I need that cord coming out the top. Yeah, because you want to sit weird. back with that con with that controller yeah. right here. Yeah, right. And so having that cord. Busting in the gut nonstop. Busting, um, busting, 
the <laughs> um, the system itself was pretty small. Yeah, I it did, is very though, small. appreciate that it had four ports. Yeah. Multiplayer was, like, couch co-op multiplayer was something that was huge in this generation. Both yeah. the Dreamcast and the GameCube had it. And, well, and the N64 kind of pioneered the that. The N64 like, had it, yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, the PlayStation was the only system of this generation that didn't. Well, I mean, I guess when the Xbox eventually did release, the Xbox also had four ports. Yeah, yeah, I guess PS2 was the only one that PS2 didn't. PS2 was take. the only one that didn't have it. And I don't know if they did sell a multi-tap, but I don't yeah, know if they many did. games really took advantage of it. We only that. used, like, the, the wrestling games. Me and my buddy, yeah, like, Paul, yeah. we would play, like, the wrestling games, and it had... You could have, I think, I want to say seven, but I could be wrong. Right, right, yeah. Um, um, and that's something that's kind of slowly started slipping away, too. I mean, as you would go into wireless, too, then that, that was a wasn't such a big deal but yeah um, and then an online play like kind of yeah yeah it's kind of molded this was kind of the last jumping point before the systems were online only right yeah, this is yeah. the last generation of those games um number one game in my opinion i think is a split is a two-way split in my opinion uh marvel versus capcom 2 and crazy taxi i think those were the were the system sellers Aside from the ones that we already spoke about, most people that I spoke to uh, now, like nowadays, mm -hmm. um, when they speak about the, the Dreamcast that they owned, it was typically for one of those two games. The fighting scene on the Dreamcast was huge. There was a boatload of fighting yeah, games. Yeah, that era had a lot of really good fighting games. Like, right? I think I think the um dreamcast strong point was it was very it was it was basically and this was sega's plan right from the beginning was so all the uh companies they always release different like arcade builds i don't even know what the terminology is right and you and in the arcade you plug like this big thing chipboard board. yeah board into it and they're, PCB. they're yeah, yeah yeah and their build um that they were coming out with was called the naomi and so they wanted the Dreamcast to basically be an at-home Naomi. And arcade, and so yeah. that's why the conversion from, like, arcade to Dreamcast was so almost, like, perfect. It was – they were really, really good. Yeah. And it was just, like, super smooth. Everything was just really, really well done. And that was really their strong point because mm -hmm. if you played a game that you enjoyed in the arcade, you could come home and play it, like, one-to-one -one on your Dreamcast with up to yeah. four players. And I think that's yeah. why they wanted the four-player player thing because then you have that that connection there right it makes total sense especially for like racing sense. games stuff like that and i think that's why like for uh fighting games like i had a bunch of fighting games on ps2 and on dreamcast and they just all mm. play better on the dreamcast like the dreamcast 100%. version is just better because there's I, no nothing they had to change really to bring it to the dreamcast yeah yeah most of the games ran really smooth like crazy taxi is is ridiculously smooth for yeah, for the game like it's those that's a that's a, just a fun game yeah <laughs> like crazy fun to i would argue crazy taxi 2 is better um probably but probably. i think that's, everybody yeah. played the first one and it was like why would i buy this again like it's probably going to be exactly the same and it pretty it's much same. is exactly the same just a little bit better it's just like they tweak the game up a little bit yeah they, they added like a couple two? modes and stuff but did two come out on the dreamcast as well I believe it did. Yeah, I think I have it on the Dreamcast, but I think it sold more on the PS2 because it was kind of sold the tail more on end. the other systems. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the Dreamcast was on its way out, I think, by that point, right? Yeah. Ready to Rumble Boxing was another one. Ooh, um, I have that on Dreamcast. my Dreamcast. Fuck yeah, that's, that's a good. good one too. It's on the PS1 as well, but way better on the Dreamcast. Way better. Yeah. yeah. All of these games kind of tend to play better there. Um, and then you know you had mentioned Jet Set uh, Radio. Yeah. Um. It's just it's just funny all the fighting games, right? Like there's Soul Calibur, Street Fighter. Yeah. Uh, wasn't Soul Marvel versus Capcom? Wasn't Soul Blade or something like that on the Soul Dreamcast? Soul Blade was on the PS1. Well, I think it was on. Was it on both? It might though, have been on not? Saturn too. I don't think it was on the oh, Dreamcast. Okay. It no. was. I think the Dreamcast, Dreamcast though was where Soul Calibur was released onto. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. It was the next game. Um, In that it went Soul series. Blade, Soul Calibur, and I think I think they released it specifically on oh, okay. the Dreamcast. I do have Soul talking Ca about the arcade. Yeah, I do have Soul Calibur calls. on on Dreamcast. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was just and the and it kind of it timed it perfectly because the. The fighting game scene was definitely, like, at probably its all-time high at yeah. that point. Like, people would say, yeah. like, definitely, like, people would consider, like, the golden era to be, like, Street Fighter Two back in the day. But yeah. I really feel like 
fighting games, as far as popularity, were at their absolute peak in the Dreamcast, like when the Dreamcast came out. And yeah. the nice thing about the Dreamcast is a lot of if you have like a PS One game you love, like especially like later a later PS One game that you love, odds are it's also on the Dreamcast and looks and plays a little bit better Look on the better. Dreamcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of games like that. I've I've been finding even myself because yeah. there's games that like I didn't know came out on the Dreamcast that I grew up playing on the PS One. Yeah. And then I went and I was like, oh, I'll grab this on Dreamcast, and it just it just plays better, it looks looks better, and everything like that. It really makes you wonder how the system would have fared with a DVD. Rom. Yeah. If really. they would have been able to put the DVD in there instead of going with the CD, it really makes you wonder whether or not they could have stuck it out for that generation. Because I yeah, really I think, think the Dreamcast, the Dreamcast could have out outdone the PS2 with that DVD. I in think my so. opinion, it definitely could because have outdone that was the GameCube. Really 100. percent Yeah. Eas- easily, the GameCube. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think did as well. I think the GameCube survived this generation because the Dreamcast dropped out. I think well, and I think that and the uh, you have Nintendo specials too. I mean, I guess you, you that's that is always a system seller. But even the they Mario were at an all time low. Like they I, were not great. Like I feel like the the GameCube for Nintendo was like the Saturn for Sega. Like I believe because so you too. didn't even have like people will say uh, that they like Super Mario Sunshine and they're absolutely lying and or they haven't <laughs> played it in a long time because it's a very yeah. not good game. Yeah. Um, and it's, it kind of, it's like, there's no like huge, like, like when you think of the Wii, like I'm not a Mario fan, like in the least, and I don't know how big of yeah. a Mario guy you are, but it, when you think of the Wii, you think Mario Galaxy, you know what I mean? Like Mario Galaxy, Mario Gal- yeah. people, Galaxy 2. yeah, you've got, you've got, better. you've got Mario fans like all over the place stating that Mario Galaxy one is like considerably it considered was... to be possibly the best Mario game. Yeah. And like Sunshine was like a huge step back because you got people. People will say that Super Mario Three, Super Mario World, Super Mario sixty four, and Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Odyssey are the best Mario games of all time. Well, guess what? There's yep. two consoles there that Nintendo really flopped, and those are the ones that had kind of shitty Mario games on them too, right? right. Like they weren't the they weren't as high quality, uh, even according to the fans. Yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, and when when we talk about the GameCube, it's funny because the GameCube, I would always expect, like you said, the the Nintendo systems would always have their uh, Mario or Zelda games leading the charge. And yep. it wasn't until, honestly, and even then, it wasn't until Wind Waker came out that that people were like, yes, this is a great Zelda game. But at that time, people hated Wind Waker. Yeah, cuz they right? cuz the all the they ads showed like a better graphical like uh but dark art style like Ocarina yeah. of Time and Majora's Mask and then when they came out with Wind Waker everyone was like that's a baby's you gotta game. You got to be kidding me with Yeah, cuz it was cel shaded. Yeah, now folks will will say, "Oh, what a great game, what a great game." But at everybody the time, hated it when it first came out. Everybody hated that uh concept. And it wasn't until they actually played it and they were like, "Hey, this is actually mm-hmm. a fun game. We're going to play it." Um but the uh, yeah, I agree, I agree with you. Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off a lot of Nintendo fans here. I did not like the GameCube. I don't like anything about the GameCube. <laughs> I, I don't like the controller. I don't like the system itself. I don't like the fact that the games were on those little mini discs. Oh I yeah. Think, I think that they made I a lot of mistakes that. with the system. But looking back now, I can see some of it, right? Super Mario, uh, uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee, yeah. I think is still top of league for those folks that like Smash Bros. Yeah, that Anybody who is a Smash Bros person plays with the GameCube controller. Right. right? Well, it was like, designed that around their, that, right? For that, the most part. Right, that is their pro controller for Smash Bros. is the GameCube controller. So I get it, right? The GameCube controller has always been too small for me. It's always not fit my hands comfortably, mm. and I've just never liked it. But I understand. I'm not trying to tick the internet off here at this point, but I got to tell you, I personally think those were some big mistakes. The fact that they tried to make the GameCube into a portable system, it's not a portable system, but it's got like the handle on the back. Yeah, yeah. You've got the ability to put that monitor on the top. You've got all oh, of I this stuff. About the but, monitor. PS1 but no had way. one of those too. Remember that? Right. So why didn't they weird. design a battery bank for it? So it actually could have been portable, yeah. right? Like, um, and and I, that again, that kind of stuff didn't come till later. Metroid Prime was a, was a oh yeah a that was that huge on, on that. GameCube, massive, 
and I and I think that's and that's kind that of that was definitely the, the system seller there. I it say. was. I mean, you know, you talk about Smash Bros. You talk about Resident Evil Four. You mentioned earlier. Right, you talk right. about uh, dude. Um, remember Resident Evil Four? Uh, I, I think it was the GameCube version. It had the chainsaw controller. And it was like a big fucking chainsaw. It would have been horrible to play the game on. But it was like this big no chainsaw. And, and that was like the controller you could get if you like. I think it was like he had to like pre-order uh, Resident Evil 4 oh, or something. Man. Have you amazing. played Resident Evil 4 before or no? I've pl- I've started it and stopped it like a billion times. Resident Evil games aren't my thing. Same, I, same. I don't like them. And it's not because they're really, oh, are you scared? No, it's not that I'm scared. It's that the controls suck. Yeah, it's yeah. it's frustrating to play the game. It's like someone's walking down the path, and there's Leon. He's like, <laughs> "Yeah, that is how that one is." Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty but accurate. Like, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> I, I was about I to have, say that that was the first one with good controls, but yeah, when you put it like that, that's they're just they're just they're like, it's just it's always like been bad, right? It's, it's I heard that my thing. dude. I heard that game is really good on the Wii because it's Probably. it basically turns into like a into light like gun. a rail shooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I no, heard I mean, that's like I, the best way to play that and Metroid Prime. I, again, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I hate it. I really yeah, I've yeah. never liked a single Resident Evil game. Even the newest ones that they released still aren't really my thing even though they've they've now They look them good, like but they don't look like this point. for me. You were right? Like yeah. it's just they're just they're games for that fan base and that's great. Um yeah. I like the story of them. I just don't like ever playing them. I beat the only ones I beat. I did beat four when it came out on PS2, and I, I yep. did enjoy it. I did enjoy it at the time. I don't think I'd be able to go back and play it again because it's just I just that like you said that control style. Yeah. Um, and then the five we played a lot. Like so, so Finny and Paul and Bubs. We used to go over to Finny's place and. Uh, Resident Evil 5 was co-op like the whole way through and we used to just like play through that game co-op and like over right. and over again it was just just a blast to play co-op but right. other than that I haven't touched like any other oh you know what other ones are good the uh, Umbrella Chronicles and Dark Side Chronicles because they're light gun mm-hmm. shooters right mm-hmm. they, they retell the story but as a light gun shooter they're arcadey they're yeah. arcadey games and I'm all in on that right I'm yeah. I'm more about the way the game plays than the, the actual game yeah, itself exactly. right yeah. give me something fun to play um other, another game for that started its lifespan on on the GameCube was Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, um, no, was that, that on the? Was there an I, N64 game? I don't think there was. I think it was a GameCube game, and oh. I could be wrong. You could correct me. No, I think you're right. I'm I pretty think sure right. that that started out on the. Uh, on I remember the Bosley was addicted to that game, to Animal I, Crossing. I mean, some people really connect with Animal Crossing, right? Like my yeah. my buddy Matt built like a like a world in yeah. Animal Crossing. Some people just have a mind for it. I don't. No, I, I don't really like those don't. Games I don't either. have a mind for that, right? Like, I, I it's it's super relaxing um, to just sit there and just kind of build your world out. But it's it's not for me, man. No, like, same. It's, that's not how my brain works. Um, Mario Kart Double Dash also spoken of fondly. Apparently, one of the better Mario Kart games out there. But nobody, nobody really played it. Like, I, I feel like that's the it. least played one. I never played it, and I think it's again because it's on the Dreamcast, right? Like the, like the GameCube, um, or sorry, yeah. on the GameCube. <laughs> it was on the GameCube. Yeah. Um, let's see. We were talking about Mario games too. The only game that I really have any familiarity with on the GameCube was Super Mario Strikers. I don't know if you ever played that. Uh, is that the soccer one? one? I've never played mm-hmm. it. No. It was a lot of fun. Well, I mean, the Mario sports games are always Dude, a lot of fun because remember, they're always just kind of arcadey. Yeah, Mario Tennis and Mario Golf on the N64 yep. were really Dynamite good. games. Yeah. Dynamite games. And they, they're they they're fun, too. And no kids through. like golf. But we all Nobody played like, Mario yeah, Golf. you play that. Well, it's, and it's because it's arcadey. They make yeah. it more gamey than mm-hmm. Sim. Um, the Paper, Paper Mario had released a game... Um, at that point, oh, thousand year door. I have the manual yep. for that game for some reason. Do I don't you? know why. Okay. I think That's it came with. My, I think it came with my GameCube because I bought it at a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, honestly, outside of that, uh, Luigi's Mansion, I guess, would have been the other. That one was a popular that started one. Started yeah. there too. That was and a good one Star too. Fox Adventures. Right. That most I people like didn't Star like. Fox. Yeah, most people did not like <laughs> that. I, I mean, Turned our friend it's... Chad into a furry, single handedly. <laughs> <laughs> it did the, I've, I've uh, had tons of people say that, that that's the game that uh, that's, made them realize that was the turning point yeah, that was it. it awoke in their inner fursona if you will oh my god <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 that would have been it for me like the, the wave bird was the controller of 
choice, the weapon of choice. Yeah, I think, the wireless one. People. A lot of people still speak fondly about the Wave Bird. I, it's the first wireless controller that worked good, that you didn't have to aim. It really, really Cause, well. Because we, we had a Genesis controller that was wireless, and you had yeah. to point it at the console like are... a fucking TV remote. Oh, it was yeah. brutal, dude. Yeah. The, the thing about the Wave Bird is it was heavy, it was bulky, and it didn't have rumble or anything in it because oh, it was yeah. literally just wireless, right? Um, for the time, again, you know what? Like, for the time, I get it. I understand why so many people like it. I don't like that controller. I really hate that controller. Um, the WaveBird and... was definitely less comfortable than, like, the regular GameCube controller because it, it yeah. had to, like, jam the batteries and stuff in there. 100%. I think what uh, Nintendo did with the Pro Controller for the Switch is literally like a perfect controller that is a deal for me now i know you don't like the offset joystick yeah so i'm sure you would say that if the joysticks were were uh on the same line that it probably would be better for you but i mean the the, con the controllers of the current gen when we look at today versus what what was back then like you said you mm -hmm. know you'd have those things you have to plug into the the controller ends in order to make them wireless in order yeah to them those work, are right? awful like, dude they're brutal. So at the time, I get it. Like, that's a proper wireless controller. Um, and the cool thing with GameCube, and you touched on it at the beginning, is they carried that through to the Wii. The Wii was insanely pop popular, mm -hmm. but they were like, you know what? How about we make it fully com fully backwards compatible with the yeah. GameCube? And we'll put the damn controller ports on it. And so yeah, that's take true. Your that's bird cool. And play that's it never really been done before or no, since. Hey. No, no, nobody does that. Because even like, at all. I remember like when I was a kid, when I got my PS2, I tried using my even my PS1 DualShock or yeah, mm -hmm. DualShock controller and my had PS2, the same end. and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, they had the same end. It was there's no reason other than money. Yeah, uh, like remember when Rumble is not the way of the future? When like the six axes oh, came out, and then like two, oh. two years later, they were like, "Ha!" Now debuting the Dual Shock Three. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a big blunder on Sony's side. They definitely they definitely and, dropped and the like, ball there. It's like there's no reason not to like other than my money. my <laughs> assumption. My assumption was it the interfered um, with the six axis it interfered it interfered with the motion controls they couldn't get the rumble to work with the motion controls yeah and they, they that's what they i hope it down. is but i think maybe deep down it was just a money probably thing. money probably yeah. money but they they uh they doubled down on motion controls over rumble and nobody wanted motion controls no nobody wanted to do this I played, I had this well, one, playing the game. I think it was like Blazing Angels 2, and you could control okay. it by like doing the, it was like an airplane thing, oh, okay. and it was kind of cool, but it, it still wasn't as good as just using the fucking joystick. It gets old joystick. after a while, yeah. that's the thing, it's it's always, it's gimmicky, Oh, right? you know what like, was cool though? Um, I, the I had Ducky game? What? No. You ever play I, the rubber ducky game where you have to tip the rubber duckies into the drain? No, I never played that. Oh man, that was a fun one. That was a, like it was free on my PS3 when I when I bought it. it was a oh. rubber ducky game. I had I, I think it's called like Motor it. Storm and and you okay. could steer the cars with like this. Oh, okay. That yeah, was kind of cool. cool. But yeah. um I do want to touch back to the Dreamcast quickly and just like because you said, when you mentioned, um, you would have liked to have seen how it would have done if it had the mm. DVD thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people's arguments against that would be, like, the graphics weren't as good as the PS2. But we have to keep in mind that the Dreamcast only had a couple years to really... It, was, it, it really didn't get its chance. Yeah. So if you look at even, like, late Dreamcast games and compare them with early PS2 games... They're a lot more comparable than like a late PS2 game with like a late Dreamcast game. So I 100%. feel like if they had would have had that time, uh, obviously the PS2 is going to have um, higher maximum graphical capabilities because it was released a little later. They had a little bit more like newer technology in it. But yeah. I think I think the Dreamcast was capable of a lot more than what it ended up having at the time. I agree. Um, yeah. And as far as uh, my journey with the Dreamcast, I got one. Um, it was when I was living in Regina, which would have been maybe 2007, I want to say, 2006, 2007. Probably both that, yep. And that's when I ended up getting a Dreamcast, and I got, um, I got this really shitty, uh, Evil Dead game, 
Okay. And I got uh, what else did I get? I got uh, Soul Caliber, like the original Soul Caliber. Nice. I got Marvel vs. Capcom. I want to say one and two because I don't like Marvel vs. Capcom two, but I like the first one. The second one was just too chaotic for me. Yeah. Um, and then I got Street Fighter Alpha three Max, I think, which I never. I need to go and actually like play it because I love Street Fighter Alpha on the on the, mm-hmm. like, the PlayStation and the PSP, but I I don't. I I feel like I've never really given three max a chance, and maybe it's better. I don't know. Um, and then and then Crazy Taxi, and I think that's all I kind of had when I first got it. And I got Sonic Adventure later. And it's hilarious because like you think about what you paid for it back then. Yeah, I don't even think you could get just the Dreamcast for that now, right? Like, oh the, yeah, because the, the gaming the market price... went crazy. It's, it went it went Retro nuts, gaming. right? Like, yeah. I think I think in order to get a Dreamcast that's in good shape with all the cables and at least one controller and a memory unit, you're probably looking at like two hundred. I would say oh, 200 bucks, yeah. one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty bucks. I bet I paid. On I bet I paid thirty for the console when I bought it. I I would agree, yeah, yeah. because it was. I remember looking at them before, and it's like, oh, that's something. I'll get that later. I'll yeah, get that later. I'll get that later, and then. Uh, I want to now. Now I want to. I want. I would like to own a Saturn and a, and a Dreamcast. Yeah. Because I feel like I missed out on those two systems. Um, I really, I really think Sony made it. Or I keep saying Sony. I really Sega. think Sega made a big mistake. Uh, with the 32x and the Sega CD. I liked, and I liked them, but yeah, I don't it know. Set them down. It's hard to say. That's kind of it. Set them down that spiral, right? Like they went from the Genesis. That yeah, because they the console, they like, the almost like console hopped like really fast, and then lost They jumped support. to the Saturn, and that's what happened. Is folks were like, "Wait a second, I'm not buying these systems if you're going to keep selling mm-hmm. the add-ons I have to buy every every single year. Forget that. Yeah. We're going to Sony, and boom, dead. Like yeah, they, were they dead lost the consumer trust. Point. Like definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so um, that that I think I think that started it. Yeah, and then when the Dreamcast came out. By that point, folks were more informed, I think, too. Sony was making it crystal clear, like, look, we're coming out, but we want to give you the best system we can that has these things in it. And so you'll have to... I remember the them even cast. saying, like, you'll have to wait. You'll but... have to wait, but we promise you it's going to be worth the while. Yeah. And then 2001, the the PS2 drops, and it, it just murdered everything. Yeah, like, it, it, it just destroyed everything in its path. It really did. And, like, the PS1 had a really big lead even like Huge. yeah which is crazy because it was a newcomer on the market too you know mm-hmm. what i mean like mm-hmm. um yeah it, it was it was very very impressive and yeah. I've, I've kind of been like a playstation fan ever since like i was a, i was a cool. sega guy up until basically the uh ps1 the ps1 era yeah and and i remember i distinctly remember like my dad saying no, we're not getting a Saturn. You just got a 32X. And and right. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, but I kind of want a Saturn. But it was like, okay. I think I think yeah. they would have been smarter if they would have focused on the 32X and not yeah. even released the Saturn and just went to Agreed. the Dreamcast. Because yeah. the 32X has a lot of untapped potential, especially when oh, it comes 100%. to, uh, like, sprite scrolling and, like, uh, like just sprite based games and stuff like it they look great like they yep. look great on the saturn too but i i like if you play i think it's like afterburner 2 or 3 on the 32x it just it plays so good it looks so good absolutely yeah there was no need for them to go with the saturn i i uh i i've always kind of wondered like that that's spot in sega history the genesis the cd the 32x the saturn it was like boom Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Genesis and then the rest. And I know they had to they had to make some money up in between. The Saturn wasn't ready to go. Yeah. And that's why they went with the C D and then the 32X. But somebody in that boardroom should have been like, This is the dumbest idea we've ever come up with. We should take the hit for this year. It'll pay off down the road. Yeah. And, and I, I, I know mean, it's easy to say were, that now, but But back then, Sega and even even I think to this day. Sega mm-hmm. is very like self sabotaging and and that's oh, it's yeah. very unfortunate. So what what happened back then was that um, when and it was on, everything's honestly like Sonic the Hedgehog 2's fault because when Sonic One was like as popular as it was, they took a lot of the staff 
uh, or a couple, I think it was a couple people that made Sonic 1 and moved them to the United States. And with a bunch of, like, American developers, they kind of, like, teamed up to make Sonic 2. And this right. is kind of where, like, the big split happened. So you had, you had like, a North Sega American t- team and you had a Japanese team. And instead of working together, they would honestly, like, do everything they could to try and outdo the other and sabotage the other right. crew. So, so dumb. So even, like, you had um, Sonic CD was originally supposed to be basically Sonic 2. But that they, that is mostly the Sonic 1 team. And then Sonic 2 and made the Sonic 3 – like, the guys that made Sonic 2 went on to make, like, Sonic 3 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And it was, like, there were parts – like, they were working on a Sonic game on the Saturn. And basically, the, they were, like, asking for, like, the assets and stuff because they had, they had 3D assets that they could have been using – um mm-hmm. f- for the saturn and the japanese dev teams were like basically like nah nah i'm good and and they were like well, how the fuck are we supposed to make this game then and that's yeah. that's kind of what sunk the saturn and and the the whole uh 32x i can't remember i believe it was the 32x was the uh sega of america's idea and yep. sega of japan either wasn't even communicating that the saturn was like going to be coming I out think soon that's what it was. or what I think it was they didn't even know that the saturn was in development yeah and and they were like hey Let's get this out. We need something because because we've got like the uh, the PS one coming out and like all this Fallen stuff. Falling behind. Yeah. 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 And it was like and the Saturn did really, really well in Japan, actually. 100%. And I don't even know if the Sega 32X was released in Japan. I imagine it was, but I don't think it did Probably, anything. But not nearly. I, there was only how many games, right? Like yeah. 30 there, games or I think there like is, that. there's only like 36 games or something like that. Right. But, so, I mean, it's 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 unfortunate. And then with that road being set up, that was that was the road that the Dreamcast had to claw back from. Yeah, and, no and, shit. And so they had to release a perfect console, in my opinion, to just break even at that point. Yeah, and, and they kind of did, they, but then they got one. They up. made a lot of good decisions, and then they cut a lot of corners, and that's yeah. that was the mistake. First, first system online, right? Yeah, was, like Fantasy Star Online. A, yeah, yeah. It, it first was, home it, console. It's, started it started so many things yeah. that we use today yeah. right um and it, it's just it's unfortunate it really that was kind of ended up a being massive where, where fucking landed. innovator yeah. um and then um as far as the gamecube my first encounters with the gamecube i can't remember if it was with at finney's place or at chad's but probably chad yeah so i I don't... They were huge Nintendo people. Yeah, yeah, they were, and I never, I didn't really think of that until even now. But they definitely, they had every like Nintendo console. I don't know all I, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I know that I played a lot at Finney's, so we'll start there because that's sure. where I played probably more of the GameCube. And sure. it was, it was honestly his younger brother Tom had Star Fox Adventures, and he had um, Smash Brothers Melee, and that's probably the, what Smash we played Brothers the Melee. most. Yep. Uh, was that, um, and then he did have a Fire Emblem game, I think. On, on okay. but I, I didn't didn't really know what the fuck Fire Fire Emblem Emblem's was. never been my thing. It's it's I think you you have to like a specific kind of RPG. Mm-hmm. It's not even like it's just it's it's its own thing. I don't I, I would struggle to even describe because it's a mix of an RPG and a strategy game. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of got a little sprinkling of everything in there. Yeah, it's like a different style of tactical RPG. And it's just so heavy with lore. Like, I don't care about your world. Just let me get in there and fight. (laughs) I don't want to know all the... Whereas then it was Jacob who then led to Samuel. The 30th king. I don't actually actually know fuck all of it. It's not my thing. It's, it's, It's cool. It's just it's never been my thing. Even the latest ones for the Switch, I've kind of I've heard I've always all looked good, at, but yeah, they're, never. They're, they look great. But I, I go to play it and I'm just like, it's <laughs> 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 not it's not me. I'm, I've never really been outside of the Super Nintendo. I've never really been a Nintendo guy. Yeah, right. Same. Like the Nintendo systems. Other the, than the, the NES, characters. I've never been a Nintendo guy. Really. Right? I mean, uh, Pokemon had me pretty good um yeah, that yeah. was the reason why i bought the the ds and the 3ds mm-hmm. um po- the far- nintendo knows how to make a good fucking handheld that's that's the, what the handhelds handheld have always to. been dynamite mm-hmm. right um yeah the dreamcast just never the n64 and i said this in the n64 one the n64 and the and the gamecube just never like i remember those systems came out and 
uh, especially the GameCube, going like, why would I buy this? Yeah, why would yeah. I buy the GameCube when I could get the PS2 or I could get the Xbox, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I remember having both the Xbox and the PS2 being like, I have literally zero reason mm-hmm. to own the GameCube. I, I am not interested in Mario Sunshine. I am not yeah. interested in Wind Waker. I am not interested in Metroid Prime. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. all of the big oh, heavy was... hitter games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the other thing. I remember, I do remember his uh, younger brother playing a lot of, and I don't even know if Finney really played the GameCube because it was his younger brother's console. But I remember mm. his younger pl- b- brother playing... Uh, um, the shit out of Wind Wager. And I did, I remember just watching him play like a lot of it. And I, uh, deep down, I was like one of those guys. I was like, this looks like a, a little baby's game. The but, cell shading. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also am not the biggest Zelda guy either. So like, right. even if it wasn't the graphical thing that turned me off, I wasn't probably going to buy a system for a Zelda game. Like I've, I've right. never done that and I never will. Um, but we, uh, Metroid Prime, I don't remember if he played that. Chad definitely played the shit 100%. out of Metroid Prime. All three Prime. of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was that was a cool game to watch. It was I wasn't yeah. very good at playing it. It controlled really no, weird. It's, just, it's, it's like all the other Metroid games. It's mazy as hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't know where the hell I'm going all the time. Yeah, that too. But I, I just, it, it controlled a little different because it was like, it was it was a first person shooter, but it had like adventure elements to it, which was kind of cool at yeah. the time, but just not yeah. not for me. Um, we played a lot of so so this is where most of my GameCube uh, experience came from when I was when I was like in high school, which was probably like the peak of the GameCube, I want to say, um, but maybe even after the peak of the GameCube. But so so our buddy Chad lived, what would you say, like 10 minutes out of town, if that? Give or take. Yeah, yeah. give or take. And he had Donkey Konga on the oh, GameCube. Oh, I forgot about Donkey yes, Konga. Yes, dude. And we, I would skip school all the time and go over to Chad's place and play <laughs> Donkey Konga. Dude, we played so <laughs> much sure Donkey Konga. Konga was... And we'd yell because we found out that it wasn't, you didn't have to clap. It was just a microphone. Yeah. So we'd be like, <laughs> yeah, we'd be like, ah! <laughs> it was just like, oh man, we had so much fun. We played so much Donkey Konga. That was, I think that was they a made, fun game. I think they made a sequel too. And I think we played they the did. shit out of that as either, well. They made either one or two follow-ups to it, right? Yeah. Um, and it was super fun. Have you seen people play games with those stupid bongos? Like uh, no, using but I've controller. heard. Yeah, I've heard. I've never. <laughs> so funny, dude! It makes me think of Kami playing Doom with a freaking. Steering That's what wheel. I thought of as soon as you brought it up when he played Doom with an N sixty four steering wheel and like yeah. I think he played one of the like the Wolfenstein games with it. Too. No, it's just like I tuned into his channel the one time and he's like, he's like, oh, we missed one. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it shifts, it shifts into reverse to back up. <laughs> He's turning around. Oh my god, dude, that's the best. So funny. And so then funny. I don't even know how he would tilt because he played some newer games with it too. I don't know how you would tilt to look up Man, and down. I don't even. With the old games, at least like old first-person shooters, all you'd have if they're like up you here, directions. It, you just have to go here and it'll just aim them to shoot up top, right? Yeah. But with the newer ones, you have to like actually like look up and down and stuff. I don't know. How no the fuck idea. You did that. No idea. But, Brilliant, but but yeah, Donkey Konga, fantastic. I I remember I I remember playing that with you guys. I didn't play it with you guys nearly as much as you guys played it. Yeah, um, I do remember specifically thinking how weird it was to play a Chevelle song with bongos oh, on yeah. an Nintendo system. They had like the, the mighty most... mighty Boston's and yeah, like this good, good, had a good music. selection of music, but it's just like it's just weird. Like the whole concept, everything that's happening in this moment, very strange. It was. It was very strange, but it was really good. Um, another game we would play over there a lot. We we played Double Dash. I think once. I think that's. A, I've only yeah. played Double Dash one time. But I remember we would play Mario Party a lot. We would because that was like oh, when yeah. we would like we'd be like drinking and having parties and yeah, stuff. Yeah, parties always. Yeah, a fun game. and we'd go over there and we'd just play Mario Party, and that's where the whole like buff busters. When me, yeah, and, I think yeah. me and me and me and Matt were on like a team or whatever, right? Yeah. And we were like, yeah, yeah absolutely to, hammered. To wash the buses yeah yeah and you have like a big bus buff bus buffer and it is hard to say even sober <laughs> honestly say, yeah and then and then we were like buffing and and i think it was matt was like we're buff bussers or something like that <laughs> the buff bussers <laughs> yeah yeah and it was just oh man we had I, I think that was like that whole era like the dreamcast and the xbox i think 
I think I always, I'll always in my mind remember those as the games we would play at like parties and stuff because yeah. PS2 had a lot of like single player games a and like JRPGs yeah. and stuff like that, and that's more yeah. my speed, right? But if right. you're going out having a few drinks, going over like to a, a friend's game. house, you're always and and they, those were the two consoles I didn't have too. So right. if we went over to Finney's, he had we'd play F Zero GX on the GameCube, yeah. or we would play something on the uh, on the Xbox, right? Like yeah. And they were multiplayer games. They were more arcadey. You could just pick up and play, right? And they're yeah. better for a party setting. See, and that's why I want to go back and grab these. I can't do it until the game until the gaming world calms down. It's a getting bit better. Here, it's going it down. Getting better. But it's well, going to take a long fucking time. Understanding that, like, you're not going to become a rich millionaire by owning a copy of Super Mario Three. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know how many people own a copy of Super Mario Three? The first couple of people through the gate, yeah, they made some cash money. Yeah. But as soon as the world woke up, was like, wait a second, we could do this too. It just went. Meh. Yeah, right. well, it was all then, artificially uh, uh, inflated. inflated. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, but I would like to play uh, F Zero GX. I would like to play those Dreamcast game. games. I uh, would like to play a lot of these ones that that unfortunately I skipped. The uh, another good thing. Well, first, first, I want to finish off uh, the whole like hanging out and partying and stuff. Busters. Yeah, I remember at uh, Finney's place we. Uh, because he had the loft, right? Like, it was like a bar, yep. basically, that his parents made. And, and it was yep. above the garage, which was originally like a barn, right? It was originally right. a hay, hay loft, so we called it the loft. And uh, we would always throw parties up there. And I remember um, we were playing – it was me and Paul were playing F-Zero GX – and I think we both passed out in the chair, <laughs> and and I just remember like waking up, and uh, the the car was just like riding. You know how you can just into ride the, the wall, basically into the wall. Yeah, yep. and we were both riding the wall, but he was winning because he was riding the wall fa- forwards, and I was driving <laughs> backwards several laps. <laughs> and then like somehow Paul was like upside down, like oh man, it was insane. And then uh, th- I think that was the same night where we all went to bed and we heard that loud bang in the middle of the night and the TV was on top of Paul. And he was like, ah, oh, the TV got me. And we're like, <laughs> Gosh, what the, the hell? Yeah. What? Like, how does that even happen? First of all, I think, I think he got up to go use the bathroom because you had to get up and go down that hallway yeah. through the door. And I think when he got up, he got a little too close to the entertainment stand and bumped into it. And then it rocked and it onto him. Rocked because like this was this way. people have to realize if you're not from our it's time, flat screens. No, the TVs were huge and heavy, and we had to like help get this TV off of him. And he's like laying on the floor. <laughs> oh man, oh, it got me. It got. Oh my god, what happened to my webcam? There we go. There you go. But yeah, dude, that was that's a fucking memory. That like, was that holy was good. Crap. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. I mean, that was that. The thing is, is I is I think it's less about like. The system, like what you're trying to say, is less about the systems, more about the time frame, more about the memory, more about the time spending with each other. And that is, I mean, to double back into what we we're talking about, that was where it was nice to see four ports on the system. Yeah, yeah, right. Like because games then had the door open in order to utilize that. For a PS2 game to use four players, they had to sell you on the concept of a multi tap. And mm-hmm. if you didn't have that, you couldn't take advantage of it. And if that was important to you. Then you're going to go to the Xbox. You're yeah, going to exactly. Go to GameCube, exactly. Right? You're going to so, go to a different so one, anyways. Oftentimes, those game companies wouldn't do that in order to sell their game and their system with that game, kind of thing. So, yeah, I I, I get it. I um I I think those I think these two systems, the Dreamcast and the GameCube, were both really really good. Yeah. I think they did what they needed to do. I'm I'm disappointed that the that the Dreamcast didn't get its full potential. I really think mm-hmm. that it could have yeah. it could have turned the that ship around sad. for Sega. But I but like you said, I think with the internal stuff that's going on, likely sunk the ship before it even left port yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. I think we're better off, like, uh, as much as I love Sega. I like, I like Sega games on other systems right yeah, now. Yeah, I think but... it would have sucked to um, have to buy four consoles to play all mm-hmm. the games. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. I, I, at the time, loved exclusives because I it, it made things exciting, and it really did. Um, but I think now, like, I personally, I could give a fuck. Like, I would rather yeah. no games be exclusive. I want to play all the games and I want everybody to be able to play all the games on their preferred console. You know what I mean? Exactly. But I think I think something you you said just like a few sentences ago 
really like resonated and is very important. Uh, when you said it wasn't so much the games or the consoles, but it was the memories. And I yeah. think that's what yeah. this whole looking back at a uh, series of podcasts is really all about. Like, Mm -hmm. There have been, like, shitty games along the road that I have very good memories of. Like, Bubsy yeah. 3D. I played a lot of <laughs> Bubsy 3D in my life, man. And it is a terrible game, but I had a lot of fun just fucking around playing Bubsy 3D. And there's, <laughs> there's just there's just so many bad games that, like... It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad. But, I mean, that yeah, that is that is exactly it, right? I mean, the, uh, the, the, the game consoles at that time, I look back fondly at at that point in time in gaming yeah especially now right i think that as we go further and and you know we still have the rest of this set but as we talked about the ps2 and the xbox we will eventually get to the online gaming yeah when we jump into the next generation the systems start getting designed around being online yeah and then terminally online and then you can't play your games without being online eventually yeah right like that ends up being the way that it gets to um, and I, I really think that the games in this generation were some of the best that we've ever had, simply because the time and the effort that had to be put into it was much higher. Right now, yeah, the bar yeah. is lower because they can release a buggy mess, Cyberpunk, right? Yeah. They can release it as a disaster, and they'll just patch it over time and fix it. They'll just give you, here you go, here's your patches. It's yeah. eight months after. Thanks for buying it month one, by the way. Yeah. Um, here you go. You can finally play it a year later. Um, that, while it happened sometimes, it was so unacceptable back then yeah, it that was. it would be enough to destroy a company, yeah. right? And, and I think I think as a well, they just wouldn't a, release it most of the times if it was well, if it was like yeah, that. or if, or if they did, it would get pulled, and then that would be the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Um, it was so rare to get a game that was so busted you couldn't play it, right? Or yeah. like a game like Final Fantasy VII, where it's busted, but it's still playable. It's part of the charm you, at this it's point, not right? Have the ability to go back and hack the crap out of it. It's not even, I wouldn't even say want. that's busted. It's just quirk. Like, it's got little quirks. <laughs> I mean, the, the, there's a lot of any of these games where you can do a lot of these glitches to like, there's a part in, in Final Fantasy 7 where if you hold a button while it's happening, you skip a section of the game. Yeah, I know, but it's like nobody's gonna like find. It's not something that would no, naturally. It's not happen something that would happen on a normal play. Through. Whereas if no, you fire exactly. up Cyberpunk, whatever, when oh, it yeah, first dude. came the out, first, the first week of Cyberpunk, yeah, like, my, I was I, I I kid you not. So I picked up the game, playing my thing, and then my guy goes to pick up a bag. Okay, so the person's like, "Here, you got to grab that bag for us to continue going." I go to grab it, the bag falls through the earth and just oh disappears. God. So the quest is now unaccept uh, uncompletable, and I'm like, I <laughs> turned around to my partner to try and go and like see if I can find another way to it. Yeah. I turn around and my character's like, <laughs> he just fucking floated away. He just <laughs> posed and floated away, and that was it. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. It's so stupid. It's funny, but it's like that was an eighty dollar game. Yeah, that game was sold to so many people. They yeah. sold it to folks on the Xbox One and the PS Four. Yeah, um, and it was not built for the which PS4. it was so broken that you yeah. couldn't even play the damn game. So, I mean, uh, I think about this this generation and previous um, as kind of the last few generations of games that you could actually trust that even if you didn't know what that game was, you were going to probably have a good time with it. Yeah, and I think I think that was the, uh, like, and we'll definitely talk to this more when we get to, in the next episode, when we get to, like, the Xbox and PS2, but that was also the last um, era where... Gaming, the like graphics and stuff like that were to the point where yeah they looked a lot more like realistic. You had a lot more polygons and stuff like that, but it still wasn't realistic enough to where you couldn't um, to to where you you were gonna focus on it being like super serious and dramatic and right. stuff. Like you had the odd game like like Metal Gear Solid Two, but even Metal Gear Solid Two had a lot of goofy moments. And I mm -hmm. think I think having like that art a lot of times they had like an artistic style that they they would follow because they weren't going for like hyper realism ever at that generation right. still right so you had where like I feel like this was the last generation where fun factor came first over other right. stuff uh, over like 100%. performance and graphics like you could have like a janky <laughs> mess of the board of governors <laughs> what. 
impor- impressing the board of governors. Yeah, like, right? like you you could have like a game that had a lot of jank. Like Crazy Taxi is a janky game, but it is fun as fuck. Right. Like you know right, what I mean? Right, right. Like like these like arcadey, like super fun. The gameplay is either tight or not tight. Either way, it's gonna be a good time. Like right. the, the the entire purpose of creating games at that time were for players to have fun and enjoy enjoy their time with the game, not to tell. And and I'm a JRPG guy. I love a great story. That's yep. that's like one of the top things that I love in video games is having a great story. But I love that like quirkiness. Like even 100%. Final Fantasy X has that stupid laughing scene. There's like a lot of like stupid little things in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, but and like Final Fantasy <laughs> What? X2 exists. Oh, there was all yeah. kinds of crap out there. I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, but like, no, but like Final, Final Fantasy 7 had like all the quirky fun stuff. There's like that's, that's, that's the stuff lot. I like the most about 7 is like, Absolutely. is like fucking Marshmallow Man Barrett and fucking um, Red in the fucking, that, that suit. And he's like going like this. Like all that stuff is what I like about that exactly. era, like the PS1, PS2 era of gaming. Yep. Cause and and even the even the Super Nintendo like you just played Final Fantasy V not too long ago like yeah. that had a lot of that like super fun stuff too a lot of it and that yeah. disappears in the PS3 and on generations I feel yeah well gaming companies started wanting to be safe right yeah. they want to make a safe bet they don't want to take a chance on something that nobody's ever heard of they want to give you Uncharted 17 because people have bought uh, Uncharted. 1 through 16. They want to give you Call of Duty every 6 months. Yeah. They want to give you Madden 7500,000 2200. But you know I also I, mean? like, I also think a part of it is on the on the fans. Like I think people I th- people become incredibly complacent. I think that and the fact that when especially the PS3 generation came out, that's where you started to see people that were like graphics whores. You know what I mean? Like, nobody bought a game because it had good graphics until, yep. like, well, it happened a little bit on the PS1, maybe a little bit on the PS2, but it yep. really, like, that PS3, Xbox 360 era, people would be like, this game is better because it looks better. Like, gra- the, the graphics only, are better. The only time I think that that would be correct for me is if I was playing, let's say, Mortal Kombat Super Nintendo versus Mortal Kombat Genesis. Same right, game, right, right. Better on the Genesis. Yeah, it just the looks graphics. better. But it's not like this is a realistic game, it's so it's better. Because, yeah, I'm not buying Mortal Kombat because the graphics are better in Mortal Kombat than they are in Street Fighter. Yeah. But if I'm doing a comparison between the two systems and determining which one to go with. Yeah, oh, I see what you difference. mean. I see what you mean. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like when it's the same but game, to, to but just, it performs better on this console, you're going 100%. to get it on that console. If the graphics Absolutely. are better on the Genesis than they are on the Super Nintendo because of the way that the system operates, then I'm going to buy it on that system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's better on that system. Yeah, But it doesn't have to do with the fact that it has good graphics. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. That's not point, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, That would be the only time I think that it would be somewhat relevant, right? Yeah, and that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, even, like, if you look at games that were released on the Dreamcast... And then they re-released on the PS2. They all run better on the Dreamcast. 100%. And then so a lot of the... Uh, it's funny because we're talking about the Dreamcast and the GameCube. Because when the Dreamcast folded, they had an exclu- Sega had an exclusivity uh, deal with Nintendo. And a lot right. of the Dreamcast games, first place they went was the GameCube. And I right think it was because there. it had more of a similar hardware than the... Yeah. Uh, than the PS2. Where it was like... It yeah. was more like... There was more color. There was more like... Poly, I think there was more poly. I think similar to the PS1 and the uh, N64, the GameCube, I think, had better gra- graphical capabilities, but it was just not utilized in the way that we as gamers wanted at that time. 100%. Yeah, it's, uh, it, is, it is one of those things, right? But uh, I, I don't know. I, I really would like to own a dreamcast and to, to i need to experience it like i mean anybody can can get the copies of stuff out mm-hmm. there or whatever i i need to experience those games the way that they were intended, intended to be right yeah. on the system on a tv with a controller in your hand six feet away from the screen because they're cables Comes instead up the of wireless end, controllers yeah. <laughs> like i that's the way that i think i need to so i mean i i will i will eventually one day own that system 
Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, to being able to play that. I think another thing with... Uh... Because, like, there is a really... I don't want to say it here because I don't know how that works with, like, anything, like, getting in trouble with anything, but <laughs> there is a really if good... You back, if you were to back up your games and play backed-up copies of the games yeah, you that go. you own... There you go. There's a really good Dreamcast emulator called Redream, and it is... It's so good. It, like, upscales everything into HD, and, like, honestly, games that I own... I will not play on my Dreamcast because they just look so much better in Redream. Mm. And it's crazy what that can do to games. So, like, with you saying you want to own a Saturn and a Dreamcast, I would yeah. put that focus on getting a Saturn because there's still no good emulators for Saturn. Like, it's impossible right. to properly yeah. emulate the Saturn. That is, that is, the, that is the, the order. The order is Saturn, Dreamcast, GameCube, like, in that, yeah. in that order. Um I I really feel like I missed out on the Saturn because at that that point was we were just pure PlayStation in the house no yeah. N64 no nothing um and there was a lot of games on the Saturn that I would have liked to to have played through Yeah there's a lot of good stuff and and I like the controller too I really like my, that controller It's like my favorite non 3D game controller Yeah with no joysticks it's just yeah. I think it's just a solid not not the one that looks like a CD player Oh, that's Not the 3D the one, one, the analog. I've never actually uh, used that one before. The uh, the the one that's kind of got the like controller shape. Yeah, uh, the six buttons. Yeah, it's the clicky. six buttons. It's got the two R, the R and the L. The, it's the beautiful. clicky R. Not the fat yeah. one either. Not I mean, you might one, like no. the fat one because you like the bigger hand I controllers. Have, I, might have to, I might have to check out a couple, but the one I'm I'm pretty sure you you well we played it at your your place. The the you have a white one, I think it is. Mm, uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, that those are good ones that's the japanese yeah the japanese style ones yeah. um but and then i guess the last thing i want to say with with the gamecube is um I, and forgot to mention as far as like really good games that have are kind of like trapped on the gamecube is <laughs> do you remember so this would be like an n64 thing but do you you remember like how big rogue Ga or rogue squadron was like back in the day like star wars rogue squadron yes so, yeah, to a degree. Yeah, so it was on PC, but it was really, really good on the N64. Well, not many people know about them, but they released, like, three, two or three more Rogue Squadron games on the GameCube, and they're really fucking good. Oh, really? Yeah. Those were never really... Those are the ones where you, like, fly the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter kind yeah. of thing, Yeah. Right? Yeah, they've never really been my thing, because I always have a problem with, like, actually... It might be different on a console. But yeah, I'll it is. Tell it's, you, it's when really we, good. When we went back to the PC, man, I just I can't. I just can't. I can't do it. Yeah, no, they I'm were they were really aiming. really good. They they were <laughs> so good. Like I have one of them on on GameCube, and it's so good. And I kind of want to get right. I want to get a GameCube emulator working really well because mm -hmm. it's so hard. Like playing those on like an HD TV, they just look like dark and kind of shitty different. and stuff. Yeah. 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 So on an on an emulator that upscales it properly, those games would be just beautiful to play. No kidding. Yeah. But you have to check that one out too. Yeah, we got uh, we got more than we thought we would get out of this episode. That's right. Like. Yeah. Because uh, neither, for... neither of us really grew up with it, but we we grew up around it, kind of ish. Yeah. We knew yeah. people that We're... had them. I grew up adjacent to my my older brother owned those systems. I uh, didn't own a Dreamcast, but I I don't honestly, dude. I didn't touch a Dreamcast until we played it at your place that one time. Yeah, I just it's it's something that even my friends uh, at the time, like everyone had a PlayStation. Everyone yeah, had a PS2. everybody has that's had what a it PS2. was too. Right, I, mean, I feel like everybody had a PS2, and then a lot of people also had an Xbox. Is what it kind of yes. came down to. Yeah, that's what it ended up rolling out into. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Xbox was 2002, I think it was. So. Oh, another thing about the Dreamcast is it had a lot of peripheral controllers, and I think they were trying to spin mm. off of the Saturn success with light guns because you had light gun yeah. controllers. But what I want to get, I want to get like Sega Bass Fishing and get that fishing rod oh, controller because yeah. that would be sweet. I've that always wanted to, to be use a really that. fun game. Yeah, that I've always Sega wanted Bass to use fishing. that. But yeah, I feel like I feel like the uh, the next episode is going to be an absolute banger because we both grew up. I didn't have the Xbox, but everybody I knew had one, and we both kind of grew up playing like the PS2, and it was just yeah. such an incredible console, one of the best yeah. of all time. I would agree. Yeah, I would. Is it still agree. like the best selling console, or has PS4 perhaps uh, passed uh, it? It's I. You know what? I think that we. I think the oh, Wii, yeah, the Wii was it. Wii was fucking on the fire. The Switch too. might have also outsold it. Um, 
Let's see. Best selling game console. Game console. And hopefully, and like uh, Game Boy might have even outsold it. But if we're talking not handheld, yeah. like actual full. Oh no! You know what? It is still the PlayStation Two. The PlayStation Two it, units man. sold 155 million units sold on the PS Two. That's insane. What's second? What's in second? Nintendo DS. Oh, I believe that. That makes sense. That makes sense. 154 point two million. So how then far behind the, is it? Then the then PS4. the Switch at 139. Wow. Game Boy and Game Boy Color at 118. PS4 at 117. Yeah, PS4 is doing good, man. PS4 has been well. I mean, like, look, man, who's gonna buy PS5? There's no freaking games for it. No, that's like, true. Still, People are still buying we, PS4s. Dude, we're four years out from. Did it not come out in 2020? When did PS5 PS5? drop? 2021? I, I want to say it was 2020. It might have been even. 20, is it your 2020 or 2021? Yeah. It was right around there. And um, I, dude, like... We're three years PS5, deep and there's no reason for us PS5, to buy it. PS5, according to this list, it says 2020. According to this list, the PS5's only sold 50 million. Yeah. Right? So almost triple the amount sold on the PS4, which makes sense considering the length of time it's been out. But honestly, dude, like... That's yeah. insane. The PS3 There's... in its lifespan only sold 87 mi- mil. Yeah, PS3 right? was, didn't do great, though. <laughs> like, no, I remember when no. the PS3 came out, and people were it was, basically... It was a rough sell. People were uh, kind of relating it to the Saturn, because it was really hard to develop for, which is the same it as was, the Saturn. Yeah, the cell... What was it? The cell, cell technology pro- yeah, or whatever? Yeah, cell processor. Blast processing, yeah. basically. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, dude, for real. The, the thing is that... Um, until the PS5 comes out with some games where it's like I have to have that, um, I I don't. And you got to do better than Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm sorry, yeah. that's just not going to cut it. For the me. the new trailer, there were some things that looked good, but There's, uh, I, think I, I I man, I I want to rant so hard right now. The thing about Final Fantasy VII remake two, and I know you and Alex had t- spoken about this on, yeah, the, on yeah. the other podcast. The thing about Final Fantasy VII remake two. It looks like a fun game. Yeah, it does. It does not look like Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Those things should have been separated. It should have been whatever they wanted it, this game to be. Final Fantasy, out in the world, spirits unclaimed, Sephiroth is your best bud ghost guy now, whatever they want it to be. <laughs> I think that's that from that the Kong flashback, to be fair. but That should have been this own little bubble and then they should have made final fantasy 7 remake and then just done it the way they should have upscaled the graphics put in the new music added in the voice yeah and moved on with their lives yeah have the go same graphics that remake has now go and ahead and just... release it in th- in three discs or whatever yeah. you're gonna do three releases disc one disc two disc three but do the seven. actual full first disc in the first one. percent dude like this one like, looks like it's gonna end at the end of the first disc Right, but it's still only got half the content. <laughs> I know. That's what's crazy. Like, it looks like it's going to take two discs to do one disc, and they're charging full fucking game price for both yeah. of them, whereas the other and one you paid, to... you paid sixty nine ninety nine for the entire experience. And you're not allowed to play as Sid or Vincent. That's unacceptable. Yeah, that's dumb as shit. It's just that... Uh, no. No. It's no. bad. <laughs> the minigames look fun. Decisions. The minigames okay. look fun the, in it. The whole game looks... Fun, but it does not look like Final Fantasy VII. That's my that's my biggest gripe about it. You I think it looks stick, like Final Fantasy VII, but it looks like a bastardized just, Final Fantasy you, VII. Exactly. Yeah. What I was about to say, you can't just stick the characters in the world in here and change everything else. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works. You can't make a Halo remake and put Master Chief in bright pink armor where he's best friends with the Covenant now. Right, yeah. you can't do that. It's not the same game anymore. It's now something completely it's something different. different. Yeah, right. And there's nothing wrong with making it completely different, but don't, but don't advertise it. it. Yeah, don't market it as it as it's the same game you used to play, but it's better now. We fixed, we upgraded it. People spoke for years. It. People people spoke for years. They used it as a tech demo, I believe, for the PS3. Three. Yep. As the the remake for Final Fantasy VII is coming. Mm-hmm. Look how amazing it looks. And people went nuts. Mm-hmm. And it was it wasn't until after when they when they were getting prepped to release remake they were like, "Well, we kind of changed the story." Well, 
I don't even think they said it until changes. after the game was out. It was too late. It was too late when they when they said we kind of changed things. Because even um, like Alex Soldier, who I do like that other pod, the other podcast with, um, yeah. he had a uh, review copy of Seven R, and yep. it was in the contract to not mention anything about like the the yep. ending part of the game or like the changes and stuff like that. Yep. So like. They they hit it intentionally. They did it on purpose, mm-hmm. and that's what makes me upset, right? And, uh, go ahead, Square Enix fans, come at me and say that I'm wrong. But here's the problem, is you get what you put into it. If you continue to buy and support these games, They're gonna keep then you'll continue to get these over. games. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I, will, I will guarantee you, ask yourself, heart of hearts, is this the Final Fantasy game I expected? No. And if you say yes, hey, you know what? All the power Giver to balls, you. But yeah. it... It was definitely not the game that I expected. Yeah. Does it look good? Yep. Does it does it look fun? Yeah, it does look fun, but it does not look like the game I was promised. Yeah, that's a really good way to, of putting it. And I mentioned on the uh, the other podcast, it's called The Gaming Effect, by the way. If you guys only watch or listen to this one, check out The Gaming Effect as well. Um, but we, uh, one of the things I mentioned on that podcast was how literally every single one of my friends who were Final Fantasy VII fans growing up, have zero or less than zero interest in playing the remakes. And uh, one of them's right there. Right there. <laughs> I was stupid. So I even, I bought remake because I was like, no, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have done me dirty like that. They well, there was no, nothing that indicating bad. that they would have until no, after the, the game was out. I had the pre-order, it was paid for, everything was ready to rock and roll, and it wasn't until I got into it. Honestly, even... The first bit, like you could, you can tell they had a massive change. The first bit of the game, where you jump off the train and you work your way through the reactor and you blow that reactor. Oh, up. And, then you, and then they change like the they do like a false flag attack thing, and then from, you see Sephiroth. From that, from that point forward, all of a sudden it was like, what the hell's going on? What What do you mean? What is this? And uh, yeah, they they made they made a lot of look. They made a lot of choices. It was a design decision. They're they're the company that makes it. They can do that. I just feel that if you were going to give us what you marketed to us, mm-hmm. that it would have been a better game. If they, and I think they could have avoided a lot of the backlash if they would have called it like a reboot or a reimagining, like right off. Hundred percent. If they would, have, if they would have identified that that it's not they the it's it's in the phrasing remake because they're like well we never said it was a remaster it's a remake no no yeah, no, no, no no a remake and a remaster are different too a remaster <laughs> is what we you can play final fantasy 9 on the switch right now remastered, remastered. you can because play final fantasy 8 though. yeah exactly that's remastered that's I'd remastering expect- the original like yeah. thing like what are the things I, called? like files and everything i expect a assets. remake where you remake the assets you do yeah. not remake the story. It's not a yeah. rewrite. Not a it's reboot. It's not a redesign or a reboot. It is a remake. You are remaking the game to current day standards. And it, and um, people, I think, forget because before this game came out, that is what remake me- meant. And now you have people being like, oh, no, remake just means it's yeah. being remade in, in a different that's, way. That's no, chance. that's not what that has ever meant until no. these fucking that's Final they, Fantasy VII remake fans started saying that's that. That's what they told you. That's what they told you it means. The, After the biggest... they charged you full price for a game you thought you were getting and <laughs> fucked you in the ass. That's what they told yeah. you. The, uh... It meant. The biggest thing that I see, I, I know we're way off the rails from our original topic, no, but the biggest thing I see with Square Enix is that they are trying so hard to break away from being a JRPG company. Yeah. They don't want to be a JRPG company anymore, in my opinion. I, I think I that like they that would like to see their games shift away into the next Call of Duty, into the next kind of game that or they like can Uncharted create one. Or something like that. Can, they can create one game, and they can just keep adding. Oh, a new I see what you mean, and, and that's essentially what one. they're doing with. That's what they're three, trying. The they keep trying thing. all of these new games that they're trying. They're pushing out. Look at them all. They're all carbon copies of games that exist somewhere else in the world. Yeah, like that the they're Splatoon trying to one. Just, they're trying to leech fans from those places, but so you that could they even, can sell you this game, you and could they can even sell you on argue, a battle pass. You could even argue that 
aside from like the shitty like Chocobo GP and like yep. fucking the first soldier and like all these yep. shitty like straight up games as a service games you could almost argue that the Final Fantasy re- remake uh, saga now is a games as a service One fucking thing. One giant, you how do because they're for just sure. stringing you along. Here's a little bit more. Yeah, buy it. Here's a little bit yep. more. Buy it. Here's a little bit just, more. You want to know what happens? We started fucking with shit. You want to know how bad we fucked it up? You're gonna have to buy it. <laughs> And that's and that's that's exactly where we're at, right? Who's mm-hmm. to say that the next game's going to be the quote unquote disc two, right? No, it won't be. How? Who knows? They could be like, you know what? We're going to take this till uh, I don't know, Gold Saucer. There you go. This whole game is you playing the arcade games at the Gold Saucer. Ninety dollars, please. Yeah. You know what? Not only is it ninety dollars, but every time you want to play one of these games, it's ninety nine cents. <laughs> oh, also, if you want to play the Mog game, do you want pink Mogs? Well, that's five bucks. Would you like a green one? That's another five bucks. But even yes. if, but even if Give they don't DLC. But even if they don't do something like that, I'm they, talking they the fact. Bad. I'm talking but... the fact that they have releasing parts of the game as individual Absolutely. full game rela- releases, yeah. and and charging you and stringing the, you along that way. The standard has been set. Yeah. Right. The standard is set. This is now the process. I I was I was ready to go. You know what? You're going to release this game in four, four, five, six chapters. Fine. So be it. But if the game has the game quality has to be there and it has to have that hit of nostalgia. Yeah. When I played through remake, the hits of nostalgia came from the music and came from the few scenes that they ripped out of OG Final Fantasy seven and put into this game. Cloud looking up at the reactor before they run in to blow it up. Right. Nostalgia. Right. Yeah. All of stuff like that, that's where it comes in. You cannot make that game and sell it purely on fun value because people are not buying Final Fantasy VII Remake purely just for that. Here's the fun mini games and stuff we added into the game. Yeah. No, I want Final Fantasy VII. That's what yeah. I. That's what you told me it was going to be. Yeah. Right. Like I said, you can't you can't remake Halo and change the story of Halo and all the different pieces of inside of Halo. Exactly. And then be like, no, why don't you like it? Master Chief's in it. Duh. Yeah, she's in it. Because <laughs> 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 exactly. Master Chief, she's right there. She's right there. Right? <laughs> we, took, we took Cortana out of the game yeah. because you know Cortana was a was a female robot. And we didn't like the way that that was going to go. So now instead of Cortana, we've got this floating little fairy that goes around your head, yeah. going, "Hey, how's it going? Hey, listen, hey, how's it going? Hey, hey how's it going? Hey, how's it going?" Like it's just it's the, leave, little leave the old games. Leave the old games alone. If that's what you're going to do, leave the old games. Don't alone. even yeah. Don't even remake Make them. your new game. Make your Final Fantasy 16. But look how good that game sold. There's no <laughs> yeah. possible way that you can sit here and tell me that this is the right direction. You can't say no. This is what the fans want. No, it's not. The other it's thing not... I'd I'd like to mention because like we're shitting on like uh, a specific remake here, but specific if shit. you look at um, what they've done with like the Resident Evil remakes, they are globally yeah. like loved, like above the yep. the classics. So Come it's to... like. It... It keeps all the story points. It keeps all the. It, it delves into them more. It improves upon them, but it doesn't change what the story it's, was. It doesn't. It's the. It's the and they're releasing between... as a full fucking game. You're getting all of Resident Evil Two if you buy yeah, the Resident sure. Evil Two remake. It's it's the difference between a company that is trying to make money and a company that wants to to do like to give their fans something, right? Yeah. If, I if mean, I'm, obviously, designing... both are trying to make money, but like, both are trying to make I know money, what you mean. If yeah. the focal point is nothing just but to grab like, hey, money, I... they they knew all along since Final Fantasy VII released, they knew re-releasing the game will net them a stupid amount of money. Mm-hmm. Look at t- ask anybody who's who who played Final Fantasy VII back in the day. Ask any one of them how many copies they own. I can tell you myself, just just me, I probably have five copies of that game. Oh I've yeah, got you're my talking original like original PS1. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. I've got my original PS1. I've got one on my PS3. I've got one mm-hmm. in a in a combo pack somewhere in that box full of games back there. I've got one on my Switch, and I've got one on Steam. Yeah. 
I've bought that game that many times because it's worth it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I will not buy another remake Final Fantasy VII game. They got me on the first one. I'm done. I'm out. Sorry. You had me in the first half, but now you don't <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Right? I, 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 look at, I look at what happened with Final Fantasy XVI, right? And I think... At the time that they 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 haven't actually released any numbers since the original time. They said they sold three three million copies of the game. Is In what like they the said. first week or something. Or first In the first two weeks. like whatever it was, and yeah. it's literally been silent since. Yep. That game showed up. That game disappeared, and everyone forgot all about it. Yeah. It is the telltale sign of a game that is not good. Sorry, it might have been fun to play. It but might it have been good, memorable. but it's not a Final Fantasy it's game. It's not a Final Fantasy. Yeah, and that's the that's the biggest thing. And you have I have people come to me and they're like, "Oh, you're an old gamer. You're just stuck in the ways of how it used to be. You can't open your eyes to how gaming is now." Well, sorry, gaming is terrible now. Yeah, for gaming the most is all part. about how much money you can spend yeah. in that game to maybe get the best stuff. Gaming yeah. now is about taking something that you love and fitting it into a box like Fortnite. Mm -hmm. That's gaming now. Gaming now doesn't isn't unique. It's it isn't heartless. Isn't brand new. It's just the same stuff repackaged and resent over and over and mm -hmm. over again. There's, I'm I'm not saying every game has to be a JRPG. I'm saying that if Final Fantasy built its fan base on JRPG. Then it should stay in that sandbox. Yeah, unless it's a spin-off. Do what you stray, want with a spin-off. Stray slightly. You look at the difference between Final Fantasy one, two, three, four, five, six. They changed things. They tweaked things. They added a job class. They took mm -hmm. the job class away. They added this in. They added that in. They changed it. That's fine. But at the heart of the game, it always stayed the same. Yeah. Right. The the, the fundamentals of the game stayed the same. Yeah. And it and as as time progressed and things and that got removed so did the fans and yeah. you can sit here and you can say that oh no it's fantastic it's amazing it's the best game i ever played it's good as it's well, then ever who's, been. who's currently playing it right now yeah. who's currently talking about how amazing final fantasy 16 is nobody it's dead silent yeah. it is dead silent final fantasy 15 was significantly better yeah and and, and, no, people, and still people don't even about it. people don't even talk about 15 all that much either people don't even a... talk about 15 all that much greatest fishing game ever made though greatest fishing game ever made <laughs> There's there's a lot. I think we should do a topic on this the the state of gaming at eventual point. Or I wanna, maybe bring me in over to your other side there, and we'll chat with Alex. About I want to do. I I definitely down the road want to do um a maybe after I guess rebirth is comes out soon, but I want right to do away. and kind of walk through your experience of remake because sure I when I played the bit that I played I didn't play it from a place of love to begin with. You know what I mean? Because, like, I'm, I'm not a huge were, Final Fantasy you, VII you were guy. Going in, you were going in critical. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I mean, I, I, I ha it was a fun play. I enjoyed it. The combat's fun. It, it is, but it's not, it's, it doesn't, the thing is, like I said, the, I hated the, the, the pieces, you didn't like that? I don't, no. I didn't mind it, right? It's not, but you have you have to take it yourself out of the concept of it being what it was before. Yeah. It is a completely different game. And as soon as you put that hat on, you go, no, this is not Final Fantasy. This is something else. Yeah, All yeah. of a sudden, the game's significantly better. The parts that I hate is it was severely padded Yo, for the yeah. sake of extending the game out. Yep. That's it. Like, it was so heavily stretched because they wanted to push this first one out, I personally think, to gauge interest. Yeah, and they knew that if they sold this copy out, and they didn't tell you that they were going to do it this way, that their numbers would skyrocket. Mm -hmm. They would have the proof they need to build the second game, and then they could continue pushing this narrative. Right? They can continue yep. pushing this way through. Look at the sales numbers for from number one to number two. That's what I'm going to be watching. Yeah, when this I'm game very releases. curious to see because I will promise you this, there's going to be a big it's, drop off. It's got, it's got Final Fantasy 7 in the title. It's going to sell. It's but, going to sell. Period. But, That's how it's going to work. However, look at the difference between 1 and 2 because mm -hmm. I promise you there's more folks like me than yeah. there are folks that will stick with it. The people who stick with it, guess what? The sales numbers for this game, I expect to be fully in line with Final Fantasy 16. 
I expect yeah. to be fully in line with all of these new games that they release because it's the same people who buy every single game because I must support the company. If I yeah. don't support the company, they'll stop making my games. Even though you know they're what? They not, might. They kind of stopped yeah. making your games after Final That's Fantasy what? X. <laughs> they don't make your games anymore. <laughs> you can't just accept the fact that they are releasing something. Yeah. I'm not supporting Pokemon anymore. Pokemon put those DLCs out buying those dlcs yeah i'm not buying a new game until they figure out what they want to do with it yeah they got to get it sorted out you want perfect example of how bad people want a good pokemon game go look at the sales numbers of pal world Mm -hmm. you go look at the numbers of people playing pal world right now and i tell you as somebody who is who loves pokemon and hates base building games (laughs) that game game almost got me to buy a copy yeah if it wasn't so heavy into base building I probably would have bought a copy of it too. Yeah. That's how bad people want a good Pokemon game. It doesn't even have freaking Pokemon in it, and people are buying it in droves. Yeah. That's all that they would have to do. But they can't do that because that would take a level of challenge and yeah. effort and yeah. money and taking a risk on something that they don't know is a sure thing. Yeah. And that's why Sega failed. No, yeah. And that's why the Dreamcast. That's why the Dreamcast failed. No, it's not. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry. Thanks Huge a lot. rant at the end there. No, it's good. Sorry. Thanks a lot for watching or listening. Um, if you're listening to this on Spotify and you want to see the video version, it's always up on YouTube as well. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to listen to it in your car or whatever, uh, feel free to look us up on Spotify. It's just under Relaxed link, Retro baby. Talk. And uh, yeah, be sure to thumb up. Give the old subscription, and uh, you can check us out on Twitch as well, up above, uh, twitch.tv slash dookie03. And twitch.tv slash DG online. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing my streams on YouTube as well, so you can check them out right here on YouTube. But for Mike, be sure to check them out on Twitter. On uh, Twitch. Twitter. On Twitch. Twitter. Come and see me on Twitter. No, and also, um, the, the best way to stay in touch with us is to join the Discord, Discord. Right? Yeah, so, the link is uh, down in the com- comments or in the uh, Click on that description. link. Come, come and talk with us. We have a very active Discord community, um, and we'd love you to be part of it. So come All on right. over. Have a good one, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.